Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Van Norman. I'm a principal of cyber physical practice at Grimm. I'm here today with, with Marco. Hey, everybody. I'm Marco. I'm 1898 Burns and McDonald. Nice to be here with you, Tom. Absolutely. Same here. And, hey, uh, Tom, I, I, hear, I hear that it's uh, October Cyber Month. You know what? I heard that same thing. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have Phoenix Contact reach out to us and uh, want us to video a couple of uh, short videos for them. Uh, yeah. I, I know I was looking forward to getting involved with everybody in person uh, in Harrisburg and in Houston, but that's not going to happen. So, you know, I'm uh, extremely happy to, to be involved. Well, to record I just want to let you know that I did change my password and I, I did change the post it. So I actually, I made it uh, blank. Okay. So, just so you know. No, actually, I'll get rid of that. I didn't like it. So, yeah, I'm not putting post-it notes on my screen. That's my uh, – just kidding, folks. <clears throat> you know, Mark, when, when, when we go and do assessments in, in uh, control systems and you walk through, you open up the control panels, you talk to the operators, you talk to the, the, the IT folks, the engineers, you talk to all, everybody, and, uh, you know, Sometimes you get some really good information. Sometimes, you know, you have to pry and everything. But when you sit down with people and really talk about data flows, wh what is really picking data off those controllers? What's talking to what? Uh, you know, that's a real big aha moment for a lot of people where I don't think they really understand fully where that data goes throughout their network. So let's take a look at some of, uh, some of those data yeah. flows today. Yeah, I, I think you. But you, one thing before you go too far is uh, is to know that one. And you're right. The, the big discussion is you know walking in and trying to talk to folks. But you know when they start saying, "Well, I, our our OEM knows what what's supposed to flow where and what talks to what," and here's our package vendor, uh, you know, build the materials in our in our in our architecture. But as you notice, when you're looking at these drawings, whether they're done in AutoCAD or sometimes Visio, more than likely AutoCAD on the actual package drawings. There's no data flows. You know, everything is assumed that everything's either going to a tag server. You've got an API here that could be going to a story in, uh, but a lot of that is not even shown. So the, I think the key piece when you're going into a, uh, to a site and you're, you're looking at, um, at utilizing like, for example, 62443 with its, what they call the zones and conduits, uh, really breaking those things out. So as you, if you see like the uh, light blue circle and the, like the light orange circle, it's, it's really breaking up your systems into zones and then actually identifying the conduits between those zones of communication. So if you see you've got that router that connects up to the process control zone, uh, then you see some below things that go down to the engineering workstation, then you got your control land, and then we can see that there's also a safety zone. Uh, and so you're just trying to segment those out and identify the zones and conduits. So if you go ahead and click build, this kind of talks back into what you're saying, Thomas, identifying is who is talking to what and why and identifying those and, and getting a baseline of that information. And so as we look at these dark blue arrows down on the lower level, looking from control room down to the field, these are going to be your traditional communication, your comm links in the, in the dark blue. That's going from your actual DCS tag servers. That's looking at your engineering workstation. It could be your application servers. That could be hosting up uh, your OPC, uh, or you can also be hosting up any of your your data historians. And typically, those will the engineering station will house the actual program or the project, help build the uh, the the actual HMI uh, displays, but also push those out to operator stations. Now, this is just a very simplex drawing here, but as you can see, the where we've got communications going up to tag servers, engineering servers. But you can also see as we go up the stack up towards the enterprise side, you can see that there's the operator stations. But if you notice in red, you can see going from the, uh, the actual server down in the equipment room going up to, for example, that uh, Pi Historian, uh, you can see in the red coloring of that arrow, there's also RDP remote desktop protocol, so port 3389. Some of these things may have been captured, not captured. So these are the kind of data flows that you want to be able to represent when you're doing a, for example, a, uh, a risk assessment, whether you're tying that to a 3-2 uh, risk assessment standard um, for 6443, 
uh, or just really identifying what you have in your site. And so this is just a quick mock-up of what we would traditionally look at. If I came out to Tom Van Norman's chemical plant, I'd say, hey, Tom, show me your data flows. And Tom would show me something like this, hopefully. It would probably be on a sonic napkin, though. But, uh, <laughs> hey, at least it's somewhere documented, right, Tom? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, Marco, with, with, with this, it's, it's extremely important to know what comes in and out of your network. And uh, you know, your, your PLCs should never go up to your business zone directly by, by any means. However, that data is going to go up there via a historian. So that historian can be a pivot point down into your lower end of the networks. Uh, so keep in mind that, you know, yes, you, you have routers and firewalls and other security appliances in your network, network segmentation and, and everything. There's always going to be those pivot points, though. Uh, you know, keep 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 those uh, devices updated, keep those devices, uh, you know, with, with, with the newer technology. Don't be, don't be the person with that, you know, Windows NT server there that's been out of service for decades now. Keep that technology up to date. Know what data flows are flowing where. Absolutely. Uh, so if you do get hit with ransomware, you, you don't have ransomware all the way down into your equipment room, into your, into your workstations. Yeah, in, in, in this example, I like to show because I'm also a PI, an OSI PI administrator. Um, and one of the things that you can see here in this drawing is you've got that VPN with RDP into the PI server. Then you, you're using that PI server to pivot back down into the engineering workstation or to the lower level in the equipment room and using it for to be able to do any other function. And using a box like that to do other means is... You may not want to do it that way. You may want to have a separate jump box, you know, identifying it or or finding out that you have uh, this type of communication where you shouldn't is very important. Another one in this drawing that, that I, I try to capture and show is that uncontrolled VPN uh, that's sitting out down further to the right uh, in the equipment room zone that shows coming in and going out uh, from, it says vendor remote access zone. As you can see, it pivots in through the engineering workstation through either a dial-up or cell modem, and it comes in, and then it can actually talk to either the basic process controller or the safety zone. In this instance, this is actually showing that it's actually communicating through the engineering station, utilizing the engineering station to communicate to the safety instrumented system or safety controller. And so would you have known that without actually looking at data flows and pulling PCAPs and, and using mirrored ports? Probably not. Uh, so these are some of the things that where technologies are, are very important. And there's many companies that are out there that have that uh, that uh, sensor type technology, threat detection type technology that can sit as a bump in the wire or span off a port or a mirrored port to give you visibility. And I think it's important to be able to place these things properly, whatever technology you, you choose, because uh, there's many that are out there is making sure that you're just not capturing that north-south traffic in between, for example, the control room up to that Pi server, but also east-west traffic where it makes sense, especially around the engineering workstations where the project database is housed and where functions can actually be changed. And so at minimum, um, being able to put some ingress, egress points. And now, Tom, I know you've had a lot of work and experience in, in sensor placement and data flows and data mapping. What are your thoughts and points there in in placement and uh, and and knowing uh, and getting a good baseline of your system? So, when we talk about about placement of sensors and, and placement of uh you know to, to look at the data, a lot of people were just looking at north south traffic. So so things going from uh, your control room zone down to your equipment room zone, for example, or your control room up to your enterprise. Uh, that's what we call by north and south. Uh, east and west is everything within that zone or within that that one uh, control room, for example. Having the ability to place a sensor in there, a, a, a network sensor uh, that we can connect to a span and tap ports, bring that data in, see what's happening laterally within that network is very, very useful. Uh, Placement at just your your routers or your firewalls, uh, there, there, there's a lot of value to that. But if you have, for example, your own control VP and access coming in down in your equipment room, that 
adversary, that ransomware, that w whatever's going to happen from that connection may only stay in that equipment room. That may just go east and west, only within that zone. You want to have visibility to what's going on there. That bad actor may not have any need to go up to the control room or the plant admin or corporate headquarters or, or wherever. They only want to stay in that one area that they have access to. So east and west traffic uh, captures a uh, very, very important to give you a, a full picture of what's going on on your network. Definitely. <clears throat> what you what you will find <clears throat> is that you'll see that um, whenever you're you're capturing this data uh, one clear thing i guess to note is that it may it may make sense to make sure that whatever you're capturing communication wise um is actually sent out of band of your own process control network and your own uh dmz that way or up to a dmz from an out of band network to make sure that you're not impacting that control network because even though you're capturing east west you don't want to inject back into it all your mirrored port traffic so just maybe having some out of band networking for that would be a, a good engineering uh, choice. But I guess some of the other things too, is that we do see asset owners that have a really good idea of what their data flows are, but when they go and actual do the capturing, they find out that there's things that are even at the lower sub levels in the equipment room, trying to reach out to the internet, trying to uh, trying to make communication with an application for update serving, uh, to to update the application. In other words, typical applications that you would say, well, you know, why do you have that application? Well, that's how we read our vendor manuals. Let's take Adobe Acrobat, for example. We still see Adobe Acrobat that are loaded on engineering workstations and even operator stations so they can read the actual manuals. And so you may have a heartbeat trying to go home to the application server or the, apps, the uh, app update. And so if you don't have a perimeter firewall or a perimeter um uh, protection involved that service could go out and maybe touch the internet so there's a lot of things that you can capture when you're doing your data flow analysis and capturing that up and putting into some kind of security event management so it's very important so one of the common things that that, that i run into uh, you know when we talk about capturing that that data is a uh, these systems are designed to run 15, 20 years, you know, th this isn't rip and replace every three to five, like you would might find on your corporate network. So we do run into unmanaged switches. We do run it into skid units uh, where we, we, we uh, hire a vendor to, to deliver a part of the process and call it a skid self-contained has a switch in there. Uh, a lot of times it's just a small, cheap unmanaged switch. And then our system will go in and uh, read this process data and stuff. But that confined uh, skid, you don't have visibility into it. Uh, right. So in a lot of cases, you're going to have to re-architect some of those purchases. Put a managed switch in there so you can have uh, span traffic uh, come out. Or you might have to tap something, you know, put it a put a tap in there. So it's not really a trivial thing to say i want all that east west traffic because you probably don't have that network infrastructure you're probably going to, have to look at we, we're going to have to upgrade switches we're going to have to change things around now we have all of uh you know we, we may have a dozen span feeds coming back to our sensors well now we got to look at span aggregators to make them all into one 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 uh network jack so as you go through this, uh, there's a lot of different things to, 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 to definitely keep in mind. Uh, and we need to do this and not interrupt the process. So we're looking at maintenance turnarounds. We're looking at, you know, downtimes and, and things like that to get all this data that we need. You know, that's you bring up a great point, Tom, and you're spot on with that. One of the other things, too, is that as you're introducing possibly new technology to, to change out unmanaged switches, which you're right, you do see a lot of that coming on skid units and putting in managed uh, switches uh, is making sure that whatever you're putting in, uh, you get as much information on that device as possible. Like mean time to fail, mean time between failure is a class one dip to is an area uh, classification uh, for electrical and, and hazardous area. Uh, I think these are very important. 
uh, because as you add other things, whether it's replacement or adding new things in for the sake of cybersecurity, you have to be very careful because that could impact reliability and integrity. So uh, I know that those, those are some of the concerns when we start adding in spans and taps and doing all these things is, are we, could we possibly impact the, the uh, reliance of the mission? And in, by, by using the switches with the actual span port feature, uh, you're, you're in a better spot than trying to add in a separate splice tap and, and adding things in that don't have area classification, mean time to fail, mean time between failure rates. And so you could be crippling your, your, your system that way. So make sure that your approach is good. On the flip side, Tom, what I do also see is vendors saying, or OEMs and skid manufacturers saying, okay, you want, you want a managed switch? Here you go. Then they provide a managed switch and it's all 0.0.0. .0, .0. It's all SNMP is turned on out of the box. There's no HTTPS. It's all, you know, HTTP. It's all standard public. It's, you know the the same user login that you can search and password from the uh, from the manual that that's online, and so then you get 20 different skids from the same vendor. You have no OT person that could go in there and change it and do whatever they need to turn off ports, and so now you've got these 15 package units that are all sitting there with no identity, all putting in SNMP traffic or capability of traffic on that network. So you have to make sure that you have folks that are empowered, trained, uh, and able to, to uh, manage those devices and, and do so effectively and put that into your life cycle, right? And I think that all goes into understanding your architecture, breaking those out in zones and conduits, whether it's package units, distributed control systems, safety instrumented systems, and then really um, making sure that you have a good handle and grasp on the management of all the nodes on that network, right? Absolutely. Well, Marco, it's been a uh, another uh, another uh, wonderful chat with you on on this. I uh, I hope everybody finds this video valuable. Uh, so Marco and I has been doing we've been doing a couple of video series for Phoenix Contact for Cyber Awareness Month. Uh, so thank everybody for watching. Again, my name is Tom Van Norman from Grimm. Marco? Yeah, same here, folks. I really appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate your time. And hopefully, you know, and especially with October Cyber Month and Phoenix Contact uh, hosting this and supporting this mission, hopefully you're going out there making your rounds at your plant facility and, and really going out there and asking questions and, and, and making a difference out in the field. It's very important. So try to make October every month. Uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. So thank you for your time. Reach out to Phoenix Contact if you have any questions or comments for Tom and I, or just use the bottom comment section uh, of the video feed and we'll happy happy to, to answer your questions. That said, thank you. Thank you everyone.